for the worship service here in the chapel of Metropolitan United Methodist Church, 1121 West Landale Street. This is a beautiful day. It is the day that the Lord hath made. Therefore, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Please hear these opening uh, verses of scripture from Psalms 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. So on this 14th day of the month of June, 2020, we come to worship God and to praise him and to give thanks to him. At this time, we will be blessed with an opening selection uh, by uh, our choir representative, uh, Reverend Clarence Harris. Uh, we thank him for ministering to us in music. is the longest of the 
songs. There are 150 songs. And Psalm 19 is the longest songs of all. It is broken out according to the Hebrew alphabet. And I will be reading uh, from that section called Teth, uh, which in the Hebrew means ninth. It's the ninth section of Psalms 119. And Teth uh, interpreted into English uh, stands for purity and spiritual growth. And so it's very appropriate that our scripture lesson for this morning is taken from that section of Psalms 119 that teaches on purity of life and continued spiritual growth. Uh, I will be reading from verse uh, 60. Uh, 5 uh, through 72. You have dealt well with your servant, O Lord. According to your word, teach me good judgment <clears throat> and knowledge, for I believe your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. You are good, and you do good. Teach me your statutes. The proud have forged a lie against me, but I will keep your precepts with my whole heart. Their heart is as fat as grease, but I delight in your law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of coins of gold and silver. So that is the reading of Tech. May God bless the reading and the hearing and the believing and the living of his word. Let us together humble our hearts in a moment of prayer. Gracious God, our beloved Heavenly Father, we first of all give glory and honor and praise to your holy and righteous name. God, we thank you that you woke us up this morning and gave us life and health and strength to see another day, a day that we've never seen before and a day that we will never see again. So we have this day right now, and we have come together on this Sunday morning to worship you in spirit and in truth, and to hear your word, and to believe your word, and to uh, order our lives according to your word. We thank you for watching over us last night as we slumbered and slept. We thank you for protecting us from all hurt, harm, and danger. We thank you for your healing touch for so many whose physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual bodies need a healing this morning. You are the great physician and we turn to you in times like this 
to receive the healing that we need. Now, God, as we worship together uh, virtually uh, by the marvelous technology that you have blessed us with, help us to draw nearer and nearer to you. Forgive us when we have strayed away. Forgive us for when we have been rebellious against you. Forgive us when we have focused on doing our own thing that is not in accord with your word. Have mercy upon us this morning and touch our hearts, guide us by your Holy Spirit, give us a determination that we're going to live and work and love and walk according to your word. So now we glorify your name. May your presence be in each of our midst as we tarry together in worship and praise. This prayer, this blessing, we do ask in the precious name of Jesus, our risen Savior, our soon coming King, in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now we will have another selection by Brother Clarence Harris.
this morning, I would like to share a word with you. Uh, occasioned by the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic. It continues to afflict our nation. And I was reading earlier this morning about the states that uh, seven states I think it was that opened up too early and they're being uh, hit by another wave of the coronavirus. Uh, they uh, went by their own political wisdom rather than the wisdom of the medical community. You know, sometimes people are just too smart for their own good. You're right. Uh, they're not really smart. They're stupid. You're right. But they think they're smart. With no training. <laughs> Millions of dollars 
in silver and in gold. And so based upon Psalms 119, verses 71 and 72, I want to use this topic for our consideration. COVID-19, a shape up, but not a shape down. A shape up, but not a shape down. Uh, how strange it is to our ears to hear someone praise God for, what, for the affliction that one is facing. Most of us, like the ancient Jews, after God had freed them from slavery in Egypt, spend so much time complaining about our circumstances. And there are many people who ask, why me, Lord? Why am I suffering? Why am I going through this uh, difficult time? Why am I facing affliction? And in my own mind's eye, I can imagine that God must sometimes say to himself, when somebody says, why me, Lord? God says, why not you? Exactly. Because you see, uh, we are often spiritually in the tour. And we cannot see, we cannot discern that there is more than meets the eye. We have a tendency to only go by what our natural eyes can see, but quite often the real history is going on behind the scene. And we cannot see with our natural eyes what is really happening. But here, the writer of Psalms 119 is praising God for his affliction. He's not crying out and saying, why me, Lord? But instead, he's doing the unusual thing of saying, I was glad that you afflicted me. And when I stop and think about it, I realize that it's the best thing that ever happened to me. All oh, my friends, that's a long distance from what most of us are prone to do and prone to say. But this writer of Psalms 119 thanks God for his COVID-19. And I want to speak to us today on three reasons why we should give thanks to God for the coronavirus so that we may discern that God is working behind the scenes outside of our natural vision. Trust me, when well, I say that the coronavirus that's standing behind the coronavirus is God standing 
standing in the shadows working out his plan and his purpose for all mankind. We don't see that with our natural eye. But stay with me for a minute. You all know what is meant by being shaken up. Mm -hmm. Our city is shaken up. We, we have some we have some double shaking very recently. Mm -hmm. uh, one generation was voted out of office and a new generation was voted into office. Mm -hmm. And so we went from the uh, from the uh, older generation to the millennial generation. So we're going to have a new young mayor and a new young resident of the city council and a new young controller and some new young people on the city council. So there's been some shaking going on in Baltimore. Baltimore has been shaken up. So we know what it means to be shaken up. Not only our city, but our state and our nation is being shaken up by the coronavirus. Everybody's life is being touched. Nobody, no matter how much money they may have, nobody is being left out. Everybody is being shaken up. But there is a difference between being shaken up and being shaken down. Now, you say, what do you mean by being shaken down? Well, many years ago, in New York City and many other large cities as well, mobs would move into a neighborhood and shake down the business owners uh, with a protection racket. They would go into the businesses and tell the owner that the mob will come and wipe them out if they did not pay them for protection. Now, the folks who they're paying for protection are the very ones who <laughs> are, they're being protected against. <laughs> That's called a shakedown. <laughs> uh, in West Virginia, we used to call that the fox guarding the chickens. Okay. <laughs> That's a shakedown. And so, uh, some people may wonder if God is shaking us down while he's shaking us up. <clears throat> and I've come to say to us this morning that uh, Bob would pay large sums of money to the mobsters to protect them against guess who? The mobsters. And so, uh, that way, uh, in order to stay in business, they had to pay for protection. But I've come to say to us this morning that God has not come uh, to shake us down. God is not our God is a God who himself is our protector. And he does not threaten us what the mobsters used to do and in some cases still do. Mm -hmm. I believe that there are three reasons why 
God has permitted the coronavirus to afflict the world in 2020. If you notice, I did not say that God put the coronavirus on us because I don't believe he did. See, I think the coronavirus, that affliction is the work of the enemy. That's the work of Satan, not of God. But God did allow it because God has a plan and God intends to use the very work of Satan to accomplish his righteous will. Uh, what a mighty God we serve. God uh, is using the coronavirus to accomplish things that uh, could have not been and could not have been accomplished any other way. Three reasons why God allowed the coronavirus to afflict the world. Number one, a God allowed Satan the devil, who is the evil spirit who hates God and hates all mankind, who the Bible tells us come only to steal, to kill, and to destroy, and to hurt and do maximum harm. God in his infinite wisdom has allowed Satan to inflict affliction upon the whole world because the whole world was and still is seriously out of order. Mankind all across the world is in a state of rebellion. Each one is doing whatsoever he wants to do, defying the word of God and the will of God. And one day God said, enough is enough. So God is using the works of the devil to get the world's attention and to make us all aware that we need to stop, press pause, and listen to what God is saying to us. Did you know the world is the Holy Bible? Like prisoners 
in the prison. So all of us who were in such a big hurry have had to suddenly slow down. We had plenty of time at home. So God was using that. You see, God moves in mysterious ways. And he knows how to get things accomplished. But let me assure you this morning that while God intends for COVID-19 to shake us up, but he does not intend to shake us down. This pandemic comes to show us that we all need to do more work on further developing Christian character and becoming more and more like our role model, Jesus Christ. So that's the first reason that God has allowed the coronavirus to afflict us. A second reason is that uh, God is using the coronavirus to address all the backsliders <laughs> in our nation. <laughs> Folks who start the Christian journey and say that they are believers, they are disciples of Jesus Christ. Millions of people have started the Christian journey who along the way they got lost. They stopped reading the Bible. They stopped praying. They stopped attending to their spiritual growth and development. They stopped going to church. And they allowed the cares and the attractions of the world to preempt their time and energy and assets. In other words, they backslid. Then there are also uh, millions of people who have heard about the sacrificial death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus, but they couldn't care less. So they remain unsaved. But God's will and desire is that none should perish and enter into hell. But some folks are so far gone that only a miracle by the hard circumstance can get them to realize that they need the Lord. So, God allowed COVID-19 uh, to reach many such people. And recent statistics from Pew Research reports that more people are now listening to streaming worship services and sermons than ever before. Oh. That's the good news. Yes, it is. Hopefully, those who do not have a home church will join a true Christian church after the pandemic subsides. Mm -hmm. So that was reason number two. And then reason number three. God is helping more people to see who their true enemy really is. And also to see who is truly on our side. You see, sometimes we get things mixed up. We think, oh, so, such and such a one is my good friend. I 
words, he wants to shake us down. But God only wants to shake us up. And so while Satan is trying to shake us down, we can look to the true and living God as our protector. God has no need to shake us down because he owns everything already. So he has no reason to shake us down. He is the creator of God. And if he desired something that does not already exist, he has the authority and the power to create it. He doesn't need to change my So let me close this message with one of my very favorite songs. Uh, that summarizes, I think, the message that I have sought to bring today. The title of this hymn is, Once to Every Man and Nation. And this is what it says. I'm going to read two verses of it. It's kind of long, but I'm going to read two verses. Once to every man and nation comes the moment to decide in the strife of truth with falsehood for the good or evil side. Some great cause, some great decision, offering each the bloom or right, and the choice goes by forever twixt that darkness and that light. Though the cause of evil prosper, yet the truth alone is strong. Though her portion be the scaffold, and upon the throne be wrong, yet that scaffold sways the future, and behind the dim Unknown. Stand with God within the shadow, keeping watch above his own. So, God bless you. I hope this sheds some light on the meaning of COVID 19. Yes, God is using it to shake us up, but he is not shaking us down. God bless you.
Amen. Thanks be to God. There he is above in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a bomb in Gilead to heal the sin sick soul. If there is someone under the sound of my voice this morning, who has started out on the Christian journey, but along the way he fell out of fellowship. Uh, you backslid. Uh, you did not continue the journey. We invite you to Come and get back on the Christian journey and fellowship with other Christians who are seeking to grow and become more like Jesus Christ. 
We invite you to come this morning from wherever you are. Uh, you can come virtually. Uh, and uh, if you have never started the Christian journey, we would invite you to come. You see, you belong to God anyhow. All right, God made you. You wouldn't be here without God. But you have to choose. You have to use the free will that God gave you to choose God for yourself. You see, can't nobody get to heaven because of uh, because mama was a good Christian. <laughs> Grandmother was a good Christian. Amen. Granddad was a good Christian. They can get to heaven on their own, but they can't get you in. <laughs> Everyone has to make that personal decision for themselves. And I invite you and urge you to make that decision to give your life to Jesus Christ. Renew your fellowship if you have backslidden and get back on track with God so that you can be an overcomer of every affliction that comes into your life. And one day uh, you will join that holy man who will be raised from the dead of when Jesus comes in clouds of glory. And those still living will be caught up to meet him in the air. Now you can get in touch with us by sending us an email at Metro Square. That's M E T R. O S Q R Metro Square at Verizon.net. If you need to speak with a minister, I would be very happy to speak with you and to talk with you and to give you guidance on how. You can get back on track with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I have uh, two or three announcements to make. Uh, on this Tuesday coming at 10.30 a.m., we have our ongoing prayer meeting. And we invite everyone to join with us on the conference call for our prayer meeting. And you see, uh, when people wonder how are we going to make it through this coronavirus, my answer is we're going to pray our way through. Yes. And uh, when the coronavirus is gone, uh, some of us are still going to be here. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Tuesday at 10 30 a.m., join us for the prayer meeting. It's not long, <coughs> uh, but it, uh, it is powerful. Thursday at 10 30 a.m., join us for the Bible class. Uh, this Thursday coming, we will be on 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy, this Thursday, coming at 10.30 a.m. Then on Thursday evening, our pastor, the new pastor, Pastor Rodney Hudson, uh, is calling a congregational meeting uh, using our conference call in number. He wants to meet with the congregation uh, and share some things with you.
And that will be Thursday evening coming this week. Yes. June 18 at 6.30 p.m. All right. And the conference call number, in case you don't have it written down already, let me give it to you. I hope you have a pen or a pencil and a piece of paper so you can write down the conference call number. One, six, zero, five, uh, uh, four, seven, two, five, four, seven, six. One, six, zero, five, four, seven, two, five, four, seven, six. And the access code, uh, when you dial in, they will ask for the access code. The access code is 669832. 669832. That's on Thursday at 6.30 p.m. Thursday morning, 10.30, Bible class. Thursday evening at 6.30, meeting with Pastor Hudson. Then on Friday coming at 10.30 a.m., we have another prayer meeting. We're praying twice a week. So join us in the prayer. Uh, when you call in, uh, you can pray if you wish to. Uh, nobody's required to, but you will have an opportunity to pray if you so desire. But whether you pray or not, join us on Friday at 10 And then next Sunday, June the 21st, it's Father's Day, traditional, but it's, we are going to be celebrating Juneteenth okay. on next Sunday. Okay. So it's Juneteenth, Father's Day, yeah. a double celebration, and uh, we're preparing a special service for that, and we hope that you will all join us on next Sunday at 10 30 a.m. Uh, we want to celebrate fathers. All right. Our mothers are wonderful and we love them to death. But not one of us would be here without a father. And the Bible says, honor your who? Father and your mother. Not one or the other, but both. Honor your father and your mother. Irrespective of what they were like. They may not have been the finest parents in the world. Some of us did have fine parents. But either way, if the parents were good or not so good, honor them anyhow. Because if you don't honor them, the word says that your life will be shortened. Hello. <laughs> if you want to die sooner than you have to, then you fail to honor your father and your mother. And you've got it. All right. So we're going to honor fathers. And we're going to honor them. The historical event of Juneteenth. If there's somebody who doesn't know what that's all about, tune in next Sunday and you will find out. Amen. Amen. God bless you, real good. We just want to report good news uh, that Sister Esther Lee, Esther Lee,
is home from the hospital. Uh, she's recovering. And Great. we thank God so much for that. Amen. Uh, Yvonne Connor went through her uh, surgical procedure and came out well. They thought it was going to take longer than it took, uh, but we had lifted her in prayer. And she came through. And we thank God so much for that. And um, uh, others I've not heard. I've not heard from Mrs. Bond, uh, uh, nor have I heard from Jonathan Blinken, but by faith, I'm claiming that they're doing well, and God is blessing and healing. All right? We've come to the close of our service. Thank you for joining us today. And so let me uh, pray a closing prayer with you and then Brother Clarence will come and sing the closing song. Join me in prayer. Father, we thank you for your word. In Psalms 119, in verses 71 and 72, we thank you for your presence through the Holy Spirit in this service today. You said in your word that where two or three or more are gathered together in Jesus' name that he would be in the midst. And he was with us here today. We're going into a new week, O oh Lord, and we ask you through the Holy Spirit, to guide us safely through this new week. Watch over us, protect us from all hurt, harm, and danger. Provide for each and every one. Some may not know where the money is going to come from to pay the rent or the mortgage or the car payment, or to buy food, or to pay the doctor's bill. Lord, we ask you this morning to make a way where there seems to be no way. You're able to provide for the needs of your people. And so we just leave everybody in your divine love and care and keep and cause. We're in your hand. We just believe by faith that somehow everything is going to work out all right. So we pray this prayer and this blessing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Amen. Oh.